Hi, Craig. Hi, Julie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty great. Good to see you. And uh, thanks for taking the time to talk with Accelerate. Uh, we've been working with you for a few years now. Been a fantastic front end and specifically Angular trainer. Trainer, so I'd love to learn more about you, your experience with programming and training, and just you as a person. Uh, so, tell us a little bit about Craig. Well, I um, I'm based out of uh, Columbus, Ohio. I live in a suburb of Columbus, Ohio, and uh, got two two boys. Uh, one is. 13 and one is 10 now as of actually the day before yesterday. Congratulations. Yeah. What brought you originally into programming? I was more um, on the business side of the world. I like to tell people the internet didn't exist when I went to college um, because it pretty much didn't. <laughs> and <laughs> so when I, I noticed it was going to be a big thing uh, working in the business world when it first came out that there was uh, you know going to be a lot more technology involved in the workplace mm -hmm. um, so I think I was just always uh, interested in it from what it could do to you know further my career like everybody at, at a young age and also just uh, interested in how it could uh, make processes more efficient and, and, and add value to a company and how did you end up working with the technologies you're working with today, like Angular? Yeah, I always tell people I had a, uh, in my midlife crisis, instead of buying a sports car, um, was to uh, quit my job and, and write a book on those the first wave of JavaScript frameworks that came out. Uh, mm -hmm. Angular, JS, Backbone, and Ember at the time were big. Um, so I wrote a book called The JavaScript Framework Guide mm -hmm. and um, published it. Yeah, it's quite different from being a day-to-day -day software developer. What would have been the biggest differences for you? Uh, I think the the biggest difference has been the ability to kind of scale your your knowledge or influence um, mm -hmm. much more effectively. Okay. I feel like uh, a lot of software developers are try to kind of treat it equal. Um, and I think, you know, eventually we are all equal, but there's different points in our career where we know more or know less. And a lot of times people are just trying to get things done so much in software development that they don't take the time to sort of train their employees and invest in their employees. So I think that the ability to influence um, more people and really um, use the other kind of part of me, I think. I was always uh, sort of a more gregarious person, uh, okay with being in front of people, good at explaining things and so forth. So when, you know, given if you're a programmer, you basically get none of those abilities are used. All you get to use are your technical uh, expertise. Uh, so, so I think it was a nice uh, chance to use both of the sides of uh, both sets of skills that I have. Definitely. And it's a fine balance between those soft and hard skills. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about Angular? What's new? What, what should beginners with Angular know about it? Right, yeah, um, there's so much so much to Angular. It's it's pretty big. Um, in terms of what's new, there's there's some exciting stuff coming up with a new rendering engine that should be coming out this year called Ivy, and they they're currently using it internally at, at Google. Um, what it means to software developers is kind of nice because a lot of people are already using Angular. It, in uh, practice, what it's supposed to come out as is you don't change your code at all, but it um, renders much smaller uh, bundles or you know makes your app more performant or efficient. And uh, it also makes the bundles uh, just just generally more efficient. They're going to run more efficient and debugging will be easier uh, in the applications. So kind of uh, Angular community is looking forward to, to that uh, in general. As far as kind of what um, someone should know about Angular, I think it's important to understand that it's just different than like I came from a heavy .NET slash Java background and it's so different than server side programming. So a lot of developers coming into it, they're very good developers on the server side, including myself but it's just a change in mindset. So you really want someone who can kind of expedite that, who's gone through it themselves. Um, and I saw that that's why I think a lot of times I can add a lot of value to a company because I was the person that um, 
that they're, I was in their shoes just, um, you know, four or five years ago. And, and so I'm able to kind of explain um, how to get from point A to point B. And how about Angular versus React? What's your thought? Right, that's, that's always a tough one. Um, currently right now, I'm, I'm, I was kind of slow to the React, uh, React bandwagon. Uh, I think part of that was because um, it came out about when I finished writing my first book. Um, mm -hmm. So it was like, oh no, yet another framework to, <laughs> to learn and, and work on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, I think at a high level, they both, it, it, people like to talk about the differences between these frameworks, but they both borrow a lot from each other, particularly the new generation of Angular, uh, not the Angular JS, but the Angular and the React. They're mm -hmm. a lot more similar than they are different. Um, my gut feeling is in general that uh, particularly Java developers or uh, you know more enterprisey developers tend uh, tend to um, often prefer Angular because it comes with kind of everything in the box. It's a framework. It has a router. It has an HTTP library and so forth. Whereas people who might be leaning more towards the front end uh, and their background will like React because it's easier to kind of get into because it doesn't come with all those batteries included um, and so forth. And and that that makes it much more approachable and it's kind of a best of breed approach. I like to often compare and contrast it to, you could buy a suite of software like SAP or whatever a few years ago and it would have all the different packages that would be nicely integrated in them. But each package might not be the best in I don't know, human resources or in a certain area of your business. And I feel like React does that sort of thing. It's just a library, it's just the view, and it you things keep evolving around it to be a best of breed. You pick whatever you want to use um, to use with React, whereas Angular uh, tends to come with everything included in a box. Um, and so it just depends on your preference and your requirements and so forth, which works better. Do you ever have companies come to you asking for what they should use? Can you can you help a company decide that? I, I definitely can, but you know, I always like to say, you know, uh, in a perfect world, there are imperfect acts. Like I cannot predict the future, just like if you ask someone, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a big believer in, and people can't really predict the stock market and so forth. So mm -hmm. I think that, you know, what I can give people is a, a perspective on the industry yeah. and let them make their, you know, own decisions. I don't like to be too prescriptive about mm -hmm. it. And what tips and tricks do you have for Angular or React? Right, I think it's important to um, step back and understand how the architecture of the applications are changing. Um, you know, I like to show in my courses like diagrams of here's what a traditional server side rendered web application looks like. Um, that be like a, um, a Java Spring application or ASP.NET MVC application are probably the two most common technologies that people are moving over from, but that could be a Ruby on Rails application. I've taught clients that are all on cold fusion for accelerate i remember right and uh, so i've seen everything right and the point is that um that what you're doing is kind of changing that to write a lot of your front end code in javascript and the mvc framework that you're used to live on the server has moved into the user's browser on the client and just figuring out where all the pieces fall uh, in terms of uh you know the different um, artifacts in your architecture and how you construct things is is really important to understand. So the big tip I'd give around that is that it's much more like the traditional, um, the, the, the single page applications are much more like a Windows form application or a desktop application or some sort of native application uh, written uh, for a mobile platform than they are like a traditional web application um, because of how stateful they are on the client side. I know the best way to learn is to teach. How else do you learn? Do you have any favorite resources online? Do you do books? Do you do videos? Right. I usually try, like when I'm trying to learn something, um, like now, uh, 
I've taught React before, but I'm I'm working on courseware for React now. Um, as you know, I publish a, a courseware that um, a lot of Accelerate and other companies instructors use to teach uh, Angular. And the best way I find to learn something is I kind of want all perspectives. Like mm -hmm. so, I try really hard to look at like read every resource that's out there, or not just read. I watch videos. So I'll you know for like Angular, I've watched every. Angular plural site video and every video that's on Udemy, and I've read every book you know possible. And I try to look at, pull out the nuggets of of gold out of each of those resources and kind of combine them and in back into a coherent picture. One mistake a lot of people make is when they're doing like um, online or, or video learning or something, they um, they often just kind of veg out like they're watching TV, like couch potato, they're relaxing for the day. And a lot of times that's because they're learning late at night, that sort of thing. But yeah. um, the, the way I found to be much more successful that is to take copious notes when you're um, watching something online, no matter what the, the resource is, mm -hmm. and to like try to recreate um, what they do. One thing that's missing there on a lot of those video sites is that they don't come with sort of step-by-step -step directions, so it's often hard to reproduce uh, what they do, uh, mm -hmm. which is good in that you run into some problems, but you know, in a lot of the Accelerate classes, uh, like my material, I try to lay out step-by-step -step directions so that you're kind of learning as you go and you can't really get lost even if you're in a bigger group. Definitely. Yeah, and another thing is to write it down. When you write notes, they say to write and by hand, right? Because, but just by doing something physically, your brain thinks it's more important to remember that thing. So I tried, I usually take notes on my computer still, but I think that taking them yeah. on a piece of paper with a pen can actually help with retention a yeah, lot. I think like people, that's a very good point. People don't realize that. And I always try to stress that. I'm like, you know, even if, because people, you're fooled into thinking if the piece of paper um, if you never look at the piece of paper again, that there was no value in it, or that yeah. if it looks kind of like a mess when you're done and you can't really understand it that well. Mm -hmm. uh, but what happens is you like see things in your mind a lot of times, like you can see the piece of paper. When I studied in college a lot, yeah. you know, I would literally see, and you, I'm sure you, everybody's had this experience where you can see the piece of paper with the note on it. What about frequently asked questions? Is there anything that comes up more in your classes when you're teaching things like Angular? Yeah, there's uh, definitely a, a lot of um, repeated questions, I'm trying to decide, you know, which ones uh, to, to highlight. But I think a lot of it centers around architecture and best practices. I think people, at the end of the day, they kind of, uh, especially, usually we're, we're teaching more experienced developers, they realize I can go look up the syntax online or yeah. um, go through a tutorial online. but. What I'm really missing is how do I put these pieces together the right way? What am I, what's not, what's written in between the lines that I can't figure out? And a lot of times I think that falls into architecture. And I move that further and further up in my materials in the course because people are, that's really at the end of the day, that's what they're waiting for. So they, as soon as they hear that, yeah. then they can start asking the next question. Absolutely. We're really teaching people how to think like a programmer, even if they've been a developer for years, right? It's about structure and orchestration, like you're saying, architecture. It's it's really the yeah. fundamentals of thinking. Right, um, and I think that's that's really what everybody wants. You know, they yeah. can figure out the the newest language or the you know newest syntax for this framework or that framework. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really important is yeah how you organize those things. So do you back to your boys getting into their teenage years? <laughs> Do you have any advice for people and children, teenagers who want to get into the tech industry when they grow up? Uh, you know, it's I repeat what you know, kind of the, the thing I said earlier, which is mm -hmm. I went into my son's class for like when he was in fifth grade a few years ago for they had like a day of code that like mm -hmm. you know Obama was was pushing at the time, um, which was really good, getting everybody just exposed to code. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I found that was funny is the the females in the room were running circles around the guys, right? And like you don't see females in the tech industry, um, but it, it's clear that like there's just some unnatural imbalance there that's eventually going to be corrected because it was uh, it was pretty comical to see to see them, you know, without all the baggage of of life and 
you know, the, the politics and stuff around them, uh, just kind of kicking butt. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, what, what I said to them well, it was this whole, you know, when I graduated college, the internet didn't exist, right? So I think it goes back to the how to think thing. I'm mm-hmm. a big proponent of like liberal arts education um, in that, you know, who knows what's going to exist in the future, you know, uh, in terms of it's going to be totally different um, than, than what, what we have now. And so I think that there's a lot of value in not, not, um, not just learning uh, the specific uh, skill that's hot at the time or the specific trade. And I remember really not understanding that when I was young. I remember getting out of my liberal arts education and I was like struggling in my first job using a spreadsheet and thinking why didn't this is would have been the most valuable thing they could have taught me in college would have been how to use this spreadsheet but the truth is what they taught me was how to teach myself how to use the spreadsheet and then the (laughs) next thing that came up and the next thing that came up and so forth and it just took longer for that to kind of play out in life so i really recommend people just in learning to think and learning to be open and and enjoy learning Amen to that. Uh, what do you do outside of work? Hobbies, passions? You know, a lot of it is is focused on at this stage, and, and my kids are still pretty young. Uh, focused on um, uh, my children. It's been about two years ago now. One of the trainings, I was flying back, and I changed my flight. Uh, we've been debating about getting a dog for a long time, so I got this cute little. You know, they're doing these designer dogs now. They're 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 combinations of um, two breeds. They used to call them mutts, but now they call them, you know, uh, designer dogs right now. It's a good thing. <laughs> so I get this uh, Cavalier and Poodle and the thing looks like an Ewok. So it's been, uh, it's been good for me on the, the, the weeks that I'm home to, to kind of get out of the house and, and, and balance life a, a little bit. I'm, I'm a big, uh, NBA fan. I think that, uh, yeah. So that, that's another thing. I'm not too big into sports in general, but, uh, really, enjoy basketball I think that's just something from from when I was younger as well great well thank you thank you so much Craig it's really good getting to know you and thank you for your time I think I speak for myself and everyone at Accelerate for saying you are a fantastic trainer and we look forward to continuing working with you yeah thanks it's been great working with Accelerate definitely my uh, yeah, love working with Accelerate very fair and they understand what it's like to be a trainer which is great yeah Thanks.